Tony Yuba for Christ. God bless you and thank you for joining this live broadcast. I want to share something with you that I really do believe that you're going to need it as we are approaching the end of 2020. Listen to me. Hmm. Why the Bible say seed time, harvest time, whatever you sow, you reap, you plant mango, you receive mango. Listen to me. There is something I want to open your eyes to today. And this has gotten so many Christians frustrated. They keep sowing, they keep planting, and they don't get results back. And you're telling yourself, why is it that I keep pouring into this thing and I don't get result back? I don't get as much as I have poured inside. I want to explain something to you that is going to make you rethink, reset your mind, and begin to be very, very jealous and careful about where you sow your seed, how you sow your seed, into where you pour. Be very conscious of the containers that you pour into so that as you enter 2021, you begin to see increase. Because if you work with the wise, you get wiser. And if you work with fools, you get even more foolish. Listen to me, darling. I want to share something with you. Capacity. Oh my God, this illustration blew my mind. Before we get there, let's go to the scripture, okay? Matthew 4, 33 to 34. I'm reading the message translation. He said, with many stories like this, he presented his message to them. Fitting the stories to their essence experience and maturity he was never without a story when he spoke when he was alone with his disciples he went over everything sorting out tangles untying the knot so when he was outside speaking he will use stories parable to explain things to them because of their experience their level of their experience and their maturity so he will come down to their level he will not release some certain things. He will not just open up everything. He will not just spill up. Talking about Jesus. The people followed him everywhere. But he was very careful. The things that he, he let out when he was in the crowd. And the things that he allowed to come out when he was inside with his disciples. Listen to me. If Jesus applied this, knew about this and used it. It's time for you to wake up to reality because I don't want you going into another year, keep pouring into containers that cannot contain what you are pouring out. Hmm. Wisdom, darling. So Jesus will use stories to explain things to them just because of their experience. He notices that, listen, these people, they've not grown to this level. There's a certain thing you expect from a child of 18 and there are some things you just can't expect from a child of 5 years old. Let's be real. Jesus understood this. So when he's with his disciples, he will untie everything. He will pack out everything. He will, he will, he will detangle the whole thing and make them to understand in deep details. Reveal some certain things to them. And the problem and the issue with us this time, in this season, long time before now, you, you, if you look back, you will see that so many things you have let out. So many people you have poured into. So many people you have invested into, you're not getting return. You know, you, you, you expect so much back because of the thing that you have really poured into that thing. And it's not coming. And this is the reason why. You've been pouring into a very small container. You've been investing in people that refuse to grow. Have you ever noticed this? Have this ever happened to you? For a lot of us that are here in Europe, one or two of us, we've gone through this. Trust me. Where you invest in a family member, a brother, a sister, a cousin, a family member, a friend back home, and you see that they squander the money, and you keep wanting to pour into them. You keep wanting to, 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 to give to them, like, do business, do this, and you see that you don't get return back. They don't want to grow. They just think you pick this money on the floor and they just do whatever they like with it. Their level of maturity, their, their experience, their knowledge have not grown to that level. 
So but not on the you allow people to have a personal encounter, a personal experience, get in touch with reality and with themselves to decide by themselves, like you know what? I want to expand. I want to have a bigger capacity. As I was discussing this, this with my husband yesterday, he said to me, So how do we enlarge our capacity? I said, honey, it's a personal decision that you know for yourself, like, listen, this is not coming through me. This is not entering. I don't get it. I'm going nowhere. It looks like I'm just stuck on one spot. And you take the decision for yourself. Like the prodigal son and say, listen. The Bible said he came to himself and he said, how many of my father's servants live more than this? I'm going to go back to my father. He came to himself. Listen, there are some people that you will never be able to help. It doesn't matter how much you love them. It doesn't matter how much you have to pour into them. You will never be able to help them. Because they have to come to a place where they know for themselves. And they decide for themselves, I want to grow. I want to change. I want to do better. I want to know better. And by the time they, they, they make that decision, you will see that they begin to expand themselves, the capacity. And then whatever you pour into them, they will make it to, to become more. Before you know what is happening, you get feedback, you get a good feedback, you get a, a good result. Because they've expanded their costs. So if you keep pouring into people that are not mature, you keep investing into souls that just want to stay babies and drink milk instead of cracking bones. What you get is nothing back. For hard work and you say well the scripture says well the scripture say you have to apply wisdom and when you look at your environment just like Jesus did they say uh -uh, I can't let this out I can't explain it to them because they won't understand it they won't grab it they can't run with it they can't do nothing with it it's just gonna be a waste of my investment he will bring out a story and tell them till here this is what I think they can contain I'm not gonna pour essence because whatever I pour more than this is going to be overflow. And what overflow means in that essence is it's going to spill out. And whose who's, uh, um, as, as stuff is being spilled out? You. And they don't even know how much it costs you for that which you're pouring into them. And you keep pouring and pouring and they don't have the container to contain it. Look at that. Matthew 19 verse 11. But he said to them, not all men can accept this statement, but only those to whom the capacity to receive it has been given. So there are some people that don't just get it. <laughs> You're doing everything you can. They don't get it. Whatever you say doesn't come in. They can't process it. They can't chew it. It's like you're giving a little baby a bone. They can't chew it. So they cannot produce. There is no capacity. He said, this statement is not everybody that can accept it. He said, but only those to whom the capacity to receive it has been given. I'm trying to bring you to this, to this knowledge of understanding. That the reason why you feel frustrated, the reason why you're bitter, why you're angry, is because you've been pouring into containers that are not big enough, that are not heavy enough, that don't have stamina to hold what you are pouring into them. And they can't process it. Look at this. Matthew 25 verse 15. This is Jesus of the scripture. 25 verse 15, Matthew 25 15, he said, to one he gave $5,000, to another, the message translation, to another 2000 to a third one, 1000 depending on their abilities, depending, so it's the way he gives out, the way you are being given this thing, because sometimes we as Christians, we want to blame God for everything, 
Oh my God, this person, I, I started before this artist. Or why is it that she's moving forward? I started before church before this uh, uh, young guy. Why is it that he's moving forward? Oh, I'm the one that trained him. I'm the one that trained her. Look at her, she's moving forward. No, it's depending on your ability. Your capacity. That's how heaven dispatched things. So it's not enough for you to say you have a gift. Mm -hmm. And you don't do nothing to sharpen that gift. And then you are expecting more to be given. It's not possible. He said to this he gave this, to this he gave that, to the other he gave that. Depending on their ability. Look at what the CEV translation says. He said the man knew what each servant could do. He knew. He knew the problem with you is that you don't know. <laughs> you don't understand the people around you. You still not figure them out. You are still giving 10 talents to a baby. You are still pouring into people that, that are, I mean like seriously empty. And refuse to just do something to help themselves. He said, the man knew what each servant could do. Mm -hmm. So he handed 5,000 coins to the first, 2,000 to the second, and 1,000 to the third. According to their abilities. Before you start pouring out. Before you start complaining. Check out. Exactly where you are pouring into. Is there any chance of return? Do you see growth anytime you pour and you see expansion? Them taking a step, you push them forward, they are going further? Or they just refuse to move from where, you, where you're trying to get them to, to live? And you still want to play God? And then after you finish exhausting yourself, you're saying to yourself, uh, the reason why I invested so much is I expected a return. And when it's time that you're totally drained and you expect the very people that you poured into to pour back into you, they got nothing to give. And you're thinking they're wicked. Like these people are just heartless. Oh my God, after all I've done for them, I sold so much into her life, into his life. I put in a lot in this relationship. This is what I get. Of course! Because you know what you've been doing. I'm coming to talk about gift and talent next time. I just chip in that scripture to, to point out to you that the man knew. So he had an understanding. But that would be a topic for another day. He had an understanding of the people around him. Of his servants. Of his workers. Of the people God has placed in a circle. So he began to portion out according to what they could handle. Because he didn't want to do what I call bad market. So this is what we do. I love this illustration. My God, it blew my mind. Listen, this is what we do. The reason 2020 is ending, you're feeling exhausted. And people, like-minded, look for containers that come, that measure to them. And even though it's half, if I have the same container next to me, even though it's half, Yes, and this one is filled up. I know that at least there is a container to contain it. And I begin to pour. It's the same. But what we do, and the reason why we don't get returned back, and we're feeling drained, feeling empty, is because this is the lead. A small other thing. She says, helpless, I want to pour into you. And this is you. You begin to pour into something as small as this. You entangle yourself. You surround yourself with chickens as, as an eagle. You, by force, by force, you've not been sent to everybody. Listen to me. There are just some people that have decided that they don't want to move. And nothing you're going to do about it. You're going to end up getting drained and empty yourself. And most of the time, their plan is even to empty you. Mm hmm so they come with something like this mm -hmm. and you like oh yeah i want to pour and you start pouring you start pouring it's just it's just gonna contain just just this little look at that you just pour little as little as this and you finish pouring 
And you still don't get it that this is all that this thing can contain. And you still want to be stubborn like, oh no, I want to be good. I want to be that. You're just being stubborn and stupid. Sorry to say. And then you keep pouring and keep pouring. What happened is, it's already filled up. There is no capacity. There is no space that has been made. So you pour and everything will spill out. And then you keep pouring and then you're empty. And you're thinking, I've invested a lot in this person. Sooner or later, I'm going to get a return. And then by the time you're feeling drained, they've emptied you. Nothing left again, no strength, nothing. You've given your all into the small, tiny thing. You think, but what you just did was to spill it all out. And then you expect a return from this. Say, yeah, it's time for this person to pour back into me. I've trained her so much. This is what they can give to you. That's it. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't kill them. You can't beat them. You, it's going to bring you in a place of frustration. Anger, bitterness, rage. Because you expect something back that they don't have. But you think, I have poured into them. Is this all they have to give to me? Yes, because you did not take time to observe the container that you poured into. And of course, when the time comes, this is all they got to give back to you. I want to encourage you. As 2020 is about to be rolled away, sit back, take inventory, look around and see the people in your circle. You still got something left. Watch. What can I pour into? And if God show you, take time to observe. What's this for container? Will it be able to carry the content? Will it be able to, to, to hold the stain? Are you seeing movements? growth at all the willingness to change to grow is this is there even a sign that this person is taking the step to a better place or you're just doing it and you think oh i'm doing heaven a favor because i'm helping the brother out i'm helping the sister i'm pouring into no darling that's not wisdom i dare you to Remove guilt. Mm -hmm. Remove guilt. I mean, kill guilt and sentiment. And tell yourself, this is what I've got left. I've poured too much into little, little vessels. God, help me to understand this principle. So that I don't go around pouring into small, small containers. And I end up spilling them out. Sometimes the people that you even think that don't have it are the people that actually have capacity, but there's no feeling, but they have the capacity. They've opened up themselves to be filled up. And we run after, she's my brother, she's my friend, she's my this, uh, this. You see, people can fake it and make you empty your all into them. And sometimes God bring people into your life that are just broken or have a past or have weaknesses. And you think, I don't want to pour into this thing. But you will discover that even those people have capacity, but they just need to be poured into you must tell God to open your eyes. It's just like Rahab. The meaning of Rahab is broad. Broad, large. A spacious land. Rahab the prostitute. Though she was a prostitute, but she had capacity. <laughs> no wonder. Are you thinking with me? No wonder the Lord directed them to go and stay there. The spies. She was a prostitute, but she had capacity to contain 
that which was going to happen that time. And she received them him, took that, that boldness for kingdom work. Because she had a, a large heart, even with her weaknesses and everything. She understood that these are God's people. And she was receptive to that season at that time. And she and her, and her family got saved. Capacity. God used her to fulfill his purpose that time. Don't just go with the, with the outside of the container and say, Oh, it looks good. I'm just going to pour into it. Watch out. Does this thing have capacity to contain what I'm about to release? Is there any preparedness? Do you see any any um, a, a sign of increase? Do you see readiness in the people that God has placed around you, especially as a minister? You don't want to pour into people and you don't get no return. That's not the word of God. But when we don't apply wisdom and we spill out what God has given to us, Unnecessarily, because we want to go around doing the good Samaritan without applying wisdom, we get drained. And the one that we even think that we have, we spill that over and we expect a return, but we're never going to get it. I pray for you today. That the Lord will open your eyes to this thing that I've just shared with you. So that you will apply wisdom. Take your seed. Take your gift. Take your counseling. Take your advice. Take whatever it is that you have inside of you. That you have worked so hard to possess. That you will take them and invest wisely in this season of your life. You put a little into that container that is already spacious and you begin to see increase. I pray for you that every foolishness or every guilt of every spirit of I owe them so I, I'm just going to keep pouring even though I don't see a change even though I see this childish name written all over this person and you still feel like you are you 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 are oblique to be their god their jesus christ i pray for you that 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 spirit in you dies that you understand that as a human being you're limited and there is grace that has been given you must not stretch that overstretch that grace as a person because sooner or later they ain't got nothing to pour back into you what are you gonna do you must understand that the things that you have got, God has given you to pour out wisely. If it's not moving, if it's not working, if it's not expanding, if it's not growing, you are not seeing no movement. Even Jesus caused the fig tree. What are you talking about? Jesus caused the fig tree. He wanted to get rid of the, of the, the, the plant that was not bearing fruit. So what are you doing here? You're taking space. Remove this thing. Let's put something else. So God is not in the business of wastage. So don't think you're doing God a favor when selfish, self-centered, grown-up that want to remain babies enter into your life and all they do is suck and drain you. You think you're doing everyone a favor, you think you're doing God a favor by constantly pouring into those people. No, it's just a way that the enemy has entered your life, crawled into your life gently and want to suck the life out of you. It's a trick of the devil. And mostly they use people that are very close to you. You think you owe them. You don't. 2021 is coming. You must be jealous over what you carry. And be careful where you pour and how you pour. And as you're pouring, watch and look. Is there any movement? Otherwise, carry whatever it is that you have. Go and look for another container that is coming a little bit to this size and pour into you. I pray for you. Wisdom to function in this new season. To guide what God has given into you. What he has poured into you. What he has deposited in you. 
so that the enemy will not rob you of your seed so that you will finally enter a season where you sow and harvest i love you don't let nobody fool you tell you otherwise make you feel otherwise talk you out of your spot you are a queen you are a king and your father is the monarch of the universe meaning he boss go and harvest it is the time and your season to enjoy increase i love you you're very very only for christ bye shalom